So now we are on episode 29. So welcome again to my channel. And in this particular episode, we are going to talk about equity swap. Where the concept is, we're going to assume that the debtor company can't pay its own debt with cash. So instead of offering cash, it offered its own shares of stock. Okay? Now, for the illustration, we need to have this timeline again. And also, we need to assume again that BBG paid only up to the third year because of financial difficulties. Okay? Now, let's assume further that BBG negotiated with the creditor to pay in shares of stock instead of cash. And of course, let's assume further also that the creditor agreed to receive those shares. So the question is, what will happen? So first, I'll make this clear. If the equity swap really happens, then the creditor will be transformed from being a creditor to becoming an owner of the company or shareholder of the company. So that's the effect. So next is we have to know some information about those shares that will be given up by Baby G as the debtor. Okay? So these are the information in our illustrative problem as if. So, the number of ordinary shares to be given up by BBG is 100,000 shares. Now, the par value of each of these shares is 10 per share. But, it is sellable in the market for 20 per share. So, the question is, what will be the journal entry related to the equity swap? So, let's answer that question after this. So, the entry related to equity swap starts with debit loans payable, of course, because we are to cancel it already. Okay? So, we have 1,923,426. But again, if the company is using the account discount on liability, then you need to debit loans payable at the undiscounted amount, which is, in our illustrative problem, is again, 2 million. Okay? But don't worry because we will credit the discount balance. Okay? So that's the first line, debit loans payable. So the second line is, of course, the usual entry in issuing shares, which is credit ordinary share capital at par value and another credit ordinary share capital share premium. Okay? Now, before we go on, I would like to point out that I am assuming that you already have an idea on the journal entries of shares and of course the topic shareholders equity. So basically, I am assuming that you already know this too. Okay? Now, moving on. The question is, how much should be credited for these two? Well, guys, the value of these two is actually based on the fair value of the shares to be given up to the creditor. So, the fair value is 20 per share in this case, right? And you need to multiply that with 100,000 shares and that will be equal to 2 million. So, that's the value of these two. Now, to allocate, the ordinary share capital account will have the par value of 10 each share times 100,000 shares, which is 1 million. And the remainder will go to the ordinary share capital share premium account, which is also 1 million. So that's the entry. But as you can see, it's not balanced, right? So if, again, the debits are lacking, then we debit loss on extinguishment of debt. And if the credit is lacking, on the other hand, we need to credit gains on extinguishment of debt. So in this case, in our illustrative problem, we need to debit loss on extinguishment of 76,574 because the credits are greater. And that's it. That's the entry. However, we have twists. So let's talk about those twists after this. So twist number one is... What if the fair value of each share is not available? So, if the fair value of each share is not available, 
the standard states that you should measure these two here at fair value of the liability. So what does this mean? It means that this liability balance here is at book value or the carrying amount only. And there are some times that this liability has a separate value in the market, which we call fair value of the liability, especially if we are talking about liabilities like bonds payable, because bonds payable actually have fair market values like commodities, okay? So you should not be surprised if there is a separate market value for the liability other than its carrying amount or book amount, okay? So, moving forward, let's assume that this liability here has a fair value of 1,975,000. So, let's use that in our entry. So, of course, debit loans payable still at 1,923,426 and then credit ordinary share capital at par and ordinary share capital at share premium using this 1,975,000, okay? So 1 million will go to the par value and the rest will go to the share premium account. Now, since the entry is still not balanced, but as you can see, the credits are bigger than the debits, so we debit loss on extinguishment of debt worth 51,574, okay? And before we end the twist number one, let me tell you that according to the standard, if both the fair values are present, so the fair value of the shares is present and the fair value of the liability is present, you need to determine which of these two fair values is more reliable and use that to value these two here. Okay, so that's twist number one. So twist number two is... What if there are no fair values available, like there is no fair value of the liability and there is no fair value of the shares? Well, you can still debit the loans payable for 1,923,426 and then credit the ordinary share capital at par value which is again 1 million and then credit OSC share premium as the balancing figure which is in this case, that's 923,426. And as you can see, there is no entry on the loss or gain on extinguishment of debt. So that's twist number two. Okay, now twist number three. Twist number three is just saying that there will be no recording of gain or loss just like this one if the creditor is actually an insider of the debtor company. Like, if the creditor is actually the CEO or president of the debtor company, or else the creditor is the parent or owner of the debtor company, or if the debtor company is actually the owner of the creditor company, because it would be unfair to record gain or loss because of the transaction between you and the parties related to you. Okay? And lastly, please make sure that the original agreement before the equity swap or restructuring is that there is a liability to be paid in cash. Again, the original agreement should be there is a liability and that liability should be paid in cash. Because if in the original agreement, the liability is actually to be settled by issuing shares, then you are not allowed to record gain or loss. And your entry will be just like this. Okay? Now, before we end, let me tell you two things. Number one, the possible questions that might be asked of you in asset and equity swap is just related to the entry on restructuring, just like this. Especially the gain or loss on debt restructuring. Okay? And number two, Gain or loss on debt restructuring account is to be reflected in the income statement or the profit and loss statement. So I'm making this clear because there are actually gains and losses that are reflected in the other comprehensive income section. So that's it for equity swap. Now, let's have the last one. What if the creditor forgave your debt? So again, we have to assume again that BBG paid up to the third year only 
because it suffered financial difficulties. But the creditor forgave his debt. So question, what will be the journal entry related to the forgiven debt? Of course, debit loans payable, 1,923,426, and then credit gain immediately for the same amount. So it's as easy as that. And that's it. That's all for the debt restructuring topic. Now, before I end this video, let me present to you a comprehensive problem. So this is the comprehensive problem. And I would like you to answer this and apply your knowledge and let's check if you got the correct entries in the next episode. Okay? So let's end this. And if you learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and select all to be updated on my next videos. So thank you again for watching and see you on the next one.